Programming with Solidity. In this section, we will look at some of the capabilities of the Solidity language. As we mentioned in the intro chapter, our first contract example was very simple and also flawed in various ways. We will gradually improve it here while exploring how to use Solidity. This won't be a comprehensive Solidity tutorial, however, as Solidity is quite complex and rapidly evolving. We will cover the basics and give you enough of a foundation to be able to explore the rest on your own. The documentation for Solidity can be found on the project website. Data types. First, let's look at some of the basic data types offered in Solidity. 1. Boolean. Boolean value true or false with logical operators. Not, and, or, equal, and not equal. 2. Integer. Signed and unsigned integers, declared in increments of 8 bits from int 8 to uint 256, without a size suffix. 256-bit quantities are used to match the word size of the EVM. 3. Fixed point. Fixed point numbers declared with fixed mxn, where m is the size in bits, increments of 8 up to 256, and n is the number of decimals after the point, up to 18. For example, u fixed 32x2. 4. Address. A 20 byte Ethereum address. The address object has many helpful member functions, the main ones being balance and transfer. 5. Byte array. Fixed size arrays of bytes, declared with bytes 1 up to bytes 32. 6. Byte array dynamic. Variable size arrays of bytes, declared with bytes or string. 7. Enum. User-defined type of enumerating discrete values, for example, enum, name, open curly brace, label 1, comma, label 2, comma, dot dot dot, close curly brace. 8. Arrays. An array of any type, either fixed or dynamic, for example, uint 32, square bracket with nothing in it, square bracket 5 is a fixed size array of five dynamic arrays of unsigned integers. 9. Struct. User-defined data containers for grouping variables. For example, struct, name, open curly brace, type 1, variable 1, semicolon, type 2, variable 2, semicolon, dot dot dot, close curly brace. 10. Mapping. Hash lookup tables for key value pairs. For example, mapping, open paren, key type, thick arrow, value type, close paren, name. In addition to these data types, Solidity also offers a variety of value literals that can be used to calculate different units. 1. Time units. The units, seconds, minutes, hours, and days can be used as suffixes, converting to multiples of the base unit seconds. 2. Ether units. The units way, fini, sabo, and ether can be used as suffixes, converting to multiples of the base unit way. In our faucet contract example, we used a uint, which is an alias for uint 256 for the withdrawal amount variable. We also indirectly used an address variable, which we set with message.sender. We will use more of these data types in our examples in the rest of this chapter. Let's use one of the unit multipliers to improve the readability of our example contract. In the withdrawal function, we limit the maximum withdrawal, expressing the limit in way, the base unit of ether. Require withdrawal amounts less than or equal to 10 to the 18th power. That's not very easy to read. We can improve our code by using the unit multiplier ether to express the value in ether instead of way. Require withdrawal amounts less than or equal to 0.1 ether. Predefined global variables and functions. When a contract is executed in the EVM, it has access to a small set of global objects. 
These include the block, message, and transaction objects. The message and transaction objects are written as msg and tx in code. In addition, Solidity exposes a number of EVM opcodes as predefined functions. In this section, we will examine the variables and functions you can access from within a smart contract in Solidity. Transaction slash message call context. The message object is the transaction call or message call that launched this contract execution. It contains a number of useful attributes. 1. Message.sender. We have already used this one. It represents the address that initiated this contract call, not necessarily the originating EOA that sends the transaction. If our contract was called directly by an EOA transaction, then this is the address that signed the transaction, but otherwise it will be a contract address. 2. Message.value. The value of ether sent with this call in way. 3. Message.gas. The amount of gas left in the gas supply of this execution environment. This was deprecated in Solidity version 0.4.21 and replaced by the gas left function. 4. Message.data. The data payload of this call into our contract. 5. Message.sig. The first four bytes of the data payload, which is the function selector. Note, whenever a contract calls another contract, the values of all the attributes of the message object change to reflect the new caller's information. The only exception to this is the delicate call function, which runs the code of another contract slash library within the original message context. Transaction context. The transaction object provides a means of accessing transaction-related information. 1. Transaction.guess price. The guess price in the calling transaction. 2. Transaction.origin. The address of the originating EOA for this transaction. Warning. Unsafe. Block context. The block object contains information about the current block. 1. Block dot block hash of block number. The block hash of the specified block number, up to 256 blocks in the past, deprecated and replaced with the block hash function in Solidity version 0.4.22. 2. Block dot coinbase. The address of the recipients of the current block's fees and block reward. 3. Block dot difficulty. The difficulty of the current block. 4. Block.guess limit. The maximum amount of guess that can be spent across all transactions included in the current block. 5. Block.number. The current block number or blockchain height. 6. Block.timestamp. The timestamp placed in the current block by the miner. The unit is the number of seconds since the Unix epic. Address object. Any address either passed as an input or cast from a contract object as a number of attributes and methods. Address.balance The balance of the address in way. For example, the current contract balance is address of this.balance. Address.transfer of amounts Transfers the amount in way to this address, throwing an exception on any error. We use this function in our faucet example as a method on the message.sender address as message.sender.transfer. Address.send of amounts. Similar to transfer, only instead of throwing an exception, it returns false on error. Warning, always check the return value of send. Address.call of payload, low level call function can construct an arbitrary message call with a data payload. Returns false on error. Warning, unsafe. Recipients can accidentally or maliciously use up all your guests, causing your contract to halt with an OOG exception. Always check the return value of call. Address.call code of payload. Low level call code function. Like address of this.call but with this contract's code replaced with that of address. Returns false on error. Warning, advanced use only. 
address.delicateCall, low-level delicate call function, like call code, but with the full message context seen by the current contract. Returns false on error. Warning, advanced use only. Built-in functions. Other functions worth noting are 1. Add mod, mod mod, for modular addition and multiplication. For example, add mod of xyk calculates x plus y modulo k. 2. Kachuk 256, SHA 256, SHA 3, Ripe MD160. Functions to calculate hashes with various standard hash algorithms. 3. EC Recover. Recovers the address used to sign a message from the signature. 4. Self destruct of recipient address. Deletes the current contract, sending any remaining ether in the accounts to the recipient's address. 5. This the address of the currently executing contract account. Contract definition. Solidity's principal data type is contract. Our faucet example simply defines a contract object, similar to any object in an object-oriented language. The contract is a container that includes data and methods. Solidity offers two other object types that are similar to a contract. One, interface. An interface definition is structured exactly like a contract, except none of the functions are defined. They are only declared. This type of declaration is often called a stub. It tells you the functions, arguments, and return types without any implementation. An interface specifies the shape of a contract. When inherited, each of the functions declared by the interface must be defined by the child. 2. A library contract is one that is meant to be deployed only once, and used by other contracts using the delicate call method.